our friend, your friend and mine, Dan Milner. We're going to talk about telling stories with your camera, Dan. I mean, that's kind of a recurrent theme we have here on uh, AYP. And it's certainly... It is, but I have, I, I have a different twist on this, I think. So um, first of all, it's always interesting to me uh, why and how so many people are interested in telling stories or creating what's classically known as a photo essay, uh, photo project, long-term project, et cetera. I'm, I'm always curious because from the moment I picked up a camera, that is what I wanted to do. I was not interested in shooting single images, although I had to for several years as a newspaper photographer, you end up shooting sort of reducing every shoot you do down to a single image. I always wanted to shoot stories. That's to me is the real rub. I wanted to take my time. I wanted to spend time. I wanted to go back to the same places over and over and over again. Um, and so I have some advice for doing these. I have five or six different things I was going to talk about that really don't have much, that don't have anything to do with technique. But if you're going to do projects, there are things that I had to learn over the years that I think will greatly improve your chances of making something memorable. And the first one is to take your time. I think we live in a world of immediate gratification, immediate satisfaction, immediate everything. And the truth of the matter is that doing projects takes a long, long time. That's why I can barely do projects anymore. I've had to change the kind of projects that I do because I simply do not have time to go spend two, three, four years at a time uninterrupted on a project. Now I work full time for Blurb. That keeps me very busy. I have a totally different lifestyle. But take your time. So when I was in school, the unwritten rule for doing a documentary project was 10 years. 10 years of working on a project wow. and before you started to really talk about what you had. Now, there were plenty of exceptions. There were projects that were done around specific news events that happened. For example, I was in school. I covered the Waco, the cult standoff in Waco, the Branch Davidians. Wow. There were projects that came from that because it was a very unique, very short um, time frame. But for the most part, and the, the barometer of people that you need to look at, there's one photographer in particular that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use, and there, there are other examples. Sebastio Salgado, to me, is the, the most significant documentary photographer of the modern era. And Salgado worked in 10-year increments. So he would do the workers, and then he would do migrations, or he would do the book from Latin America. He did the book in the, the famine in the Sahel in Africa. But his projects came in like 10-year chunks. Obviously, we live in a rapidly changing world where photographers will work for a weekend on a project and call it a long term project. So and I've seen I've literally seen exhibitions of work that was done in a weekend that was labeled as long term. But the, the problem for those people is Salgado is still out there and the Jill Perez's of the world are still out there. The Susan Mizellis's of the world are still out there. And if you know about these people and you know the quality and extent of work they're producing, you will quickly realize that you have to up your game. So that's point number one is to take your time. Yeah. Point number two, and again, I'm swimming against the current of modern culture right here, is that's whatever why we love you, you do, <laughs> whatever I mean. you do, when you're working on a long-term project now, do not, under any circumstances, share it in real time. Do not put it on social media. Do not put it on Instagram. You are shooting yourself in the foot if you do this. Because here's why. What happened is the internet really rewired the human brain, right? So our brains have physically changed. So not just the neuro patterns of how the brain works, but the brains, our brain is physically changed to ingest micro bits of information as opposed to longer bits of information. So if you do, an online, if you do a project and you're working on a project for several years and you're sharing it in real time, what's happening is you're undermining the foundation of what it is because people are seeing it and they're saying to themselves, I've already seen this. I've right. already seen it. I did a project once that took me five years. It was about 75 images in the final take. I shared three and people, I started to hear that. I started to hear people say, do you have anything new? I've already seen this project. And I thought, you haven't seen anything. You've seen three of 75 and you don't know the story, but because people were so addicted and so now compromised into short term, do not share it in real time. If you need feedback along the way, find a mentor. Point number three, this is where we get really interesting. Do your research. Okay, and here's the thing. I say the word research, and a lot of photographers hear nails on a chalkboard. <laughs> yeah. They're like, ah, they go, no, I don't want to do research. I just want to go. I don't want anything to influence me. I don't want to, I just want to go and do this and do that. And those are typically 
younger photographers and they're typically photographers who are chasing likes and they don't want to know what anybody else has done because I get it. We all want to be original. We all want to think that what we're doing is unique when 99.9% .9 of the time it's not, it's already been done. So the key is research is not a bummer. Research is a blast. And I'm going to give you a, a I'm going to give you a prime example with, uh, with show and tell. Let's say that you want to do a project on Haiti, right? And the reason I chose Haiti was that the last time Haiti was in the news in America was the earthquake. Now, you had legitimate photographers there who'd been working there for years that went down to, to cover this story. But then you had a lot of or basically people had no business being there because they had no understanding of what Haiti was, the history, the culture, etc. So let's say that you're doing a project on Haiti. The first thing that you do is you research what the Haitians have done in terms of journalism, artwork, photography. You need a history lesson on what Haiti is, how it became a country, when, who the power players are. When there was a turnover from Duvalier to whoever, you need to know about that stuff because it's going to factor into what you're seeing on the ground. This is like taking history class, but you're only studying one country. And then you start looking in the photo community. And this is where it gets interesting. Because then you're going to find something like this, Under a Grudging Sun by Alex Webb, who's a Magnum photographer who shot in Haiti from 1986 to 1988, and he did this book. This book blew my mind. If you're going to work in Haiti, you should know about this book. And then you find Maggie Stieber, who did Dancing on Fire. Introduction by Amy Willens. Amy Willens wrote a book called The Rainy Season, which is a, a journalistic book about Haiti. So now you're branching out into the journalism that's been done from outside sources. Through the Amy Willens book, you meet Graham Greene. And if you don't know Graham Greene, he's Graham an English Green. author, one of the most successful authors, you know, probably one of the most read authors in the history of the world. His book on Haiti, which is a novel called The Comedians, it's fantastic. So now you're starting to understand what it means to do research. And all of this takes time. None of this has anything to do with being online. It's just about putting the foundation in so that now when you go, you're building on this. You're not claiming that you're, you are the one who discovered it. There, there's nothing worse than sitting down with a photographer who shows you a body of work and you say, oh, this, you know, you worked in Haiti. Um, this reminds me of Maggie Stieber. And they say, I don't know who that is. That means you just haven't done the basics. Um, yeah. And this applies to every other industry in the world. Point number four, at some point, you are going to have to talk and photograph people. You're going to have to talk to people you don't know. Most of the projects that I relate to are people-based. So I much prefer stories that revolve around people. And if you're going to do documentary work, you've got to photograph and interact with people you don't know. And so the, the key is to just go for it. You just start talking to people. You can be a fly on the wall once you've established your um, presence in the scene. That's how it works. You know, you can't always walk into a situation and start shooting without talking to people. You have to go in and sort of get permission and gauge the situation. And then you move in and out from these these things. And so if you're terrified of photographing people, you just have to roll the dice. Don't don't try to go out and start a project while you're still terrified of photographing people. Just go practice. Go go talk to people on the street and say, look, tell them exactly what you're doing. I'm terrified to photograph people. I'm terrified of talking to strangers. Do you mind if I try to make a picture of you? And you're going to hear no. People are going to say no. And it always feels terrible when someone says no. Um, but a lot of times they say no because they have a misunderstanding of what modern photographers are doing. They think that you're putting stuff online immediately. You're trying to make money off of them, et cetera. So you just say, look, I'm practicing. You know, I want to go do a project in Haiti. I don't want to go down there and waste anybody's time. I need to get better at this. You know, do you mind if I try to make your portrait? And then most people will be relatively accommodating. And the last piece of advice is, is simply be more. You have to be more than a photographer. You have to be more than someone who presses the button all day long. The truth of the matter is that most people are never going to care about your photography or my photography. They won't. They're busy. They have families, lives, jobs, um, especially now we're in a, this funky situation. But there's a lot of people around the world who are just trying to survive. They're looking for food, water, and shelter, right? Protecting their family, going to work. If you want to be in the conversation and you want a career and you want to be a long lasting individual, and you want to leave a mark on the world. It has no Instagram likes will mean absolutely nothing. You know, Instagram will go away 
and then it will be replaced by something else that you're going to have to get into on day one or you're never going to have any relevance. And so this is going to be around forever. This is testimony. It's evidence of what yeah. was happening in the world. So those are my points. Dan, we're going to wrap up. We're having too much fun. I got to go. Yeah, I got another. You got to go. Well. We're going to we're going to Dan, we're going to meet again soon. We'll let you guys we know. Thanks again. Love you, man. Love you, too. We'll see you guys later. Good luck and everybody be safe. Send it to your friends. Share it. Like it. If you haven't already subscribed, I'd really be surprised. But if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do that. Love you guys tons. And remember to get out and capture your own images of life.